AFTV, we're just chilling ahead of the uh, big game today. Um, we've got a really nice Airbnb, uh, courtesy of my man Isa. Yeah, Isa, this place is all right, bro. Yeah, man, I just, uh, it was extra time against Napoli, or injury time, so I knew we were going through. New Valencia were going through, I got straight on it before the prices went crazy. So we've got a nice little spot out here. Yeah. Got the flights booked, everything, and uh, just got my ticket a couple of days ago. So I had booked everything without without firming the ticket. But you booked for Baku? Not yet. I might. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not that confident. Well, it's a big game tonight. Massive game. But you know what we said we were going to do in this video? And you know troops are there already. We're going to react to the game last night. Now, last night, we've been out here since yesterday. And uh, we went to an Irish bar last night. We watched the game. When we got to the Irish bar, actually, because we got there when it was uh, half time. So when we got to the Irish bar, Spurs were losing by two goals to nil. It was looking like they were going to go out. And then all of a sudden, they launched this brilliant comeback. Lucas Moura scoring a hat-trick, getting that goal in the last, not even minute, last second of the game. And Spurs are through to the Champions League final. And I had to ask this question to Issa and to Troops. What happens if they win it? What happens, Troops? Because it's a strong possibility now. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. Spurs versus Liverpool in the final. You'd make Liverpool the favourites, but it's a final. It's a one-off game. We've seen finals before in the past. When Wigan played, you know, Man City in the final of the FA Cup, they beat them. And that weren't even uh, what you, you know, wouldn't you, you'd say this is a lot closer, you know, because you've got two teams at the top of the Premier League. Are you going, a Tottenham fan? I'm not a Tottenham fan, but what if they win it? There's a strong possibility they can win it. So. Fuck them. Huh? Fucking winning shit. Fuck them. I ain't got nothing to say about them. Fuck them. Fuck you. Yeah? Fuck you. It's all right saying nah, all that. Them. It's all right. I got nothing to say about them, bro. Nothing to say. <laughs> nothing. What to if say. they win it though? They ain't winning shit, bro. Huh? They ain't winning shit. They Why not? Shit. Why can't they win it? Because they're just fucking. It's Tottenham FC. They can't win. Fuck all, blood. Listen, they can, listen, Issa. What if they win it? Because the thing is, it's all right him saying all that, yeah. But the thing is about it, right, is that you didn't think they were, you know, we didn't think they'd get past Man City, and they did, mm. over two legs. Right, and Man City are above Liverpool in the league, so why can't they beat Liverpool? There is a strong possibility they could win that. No, they, def they definitely they can, and they've done, you could say, well with a lot of injuries. And obviously, they talk about how they haven't spent a lot of money, so they've got a good manager. When you've got a good manager who knows what he's doing and knows his players, and his players will die for him, which they look like they will, they've got a chance. But Liverpool have better players, I think, a slightly better manager, and Liverpool have the experience, they've been to the Champions League fight. You've got players like uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Robertson, who've already played in Champions League finals and they're barely 20, 21 or whatever mm. that is. So I, I think Liverpool might have too much for them. But like Klopp's, said, Klopp's lost a couple of finals, you know. He's lost every final since he's been yeah. at Liverpool. I think he's like, he lost every final at, at yeah. Borussia Dortmund. He won the league once, but I, well, boy, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Liverpool fan <laughs> for that game. So I'm a Liverpool fan for that game, right? But listen, we've got to be real right now, right? They've got a big chance of winning that. And... You know, the, the question also I've got to ask, right? I'm going to ask both of you this, right? Is, have they passed us now? No. Nope. You know, let, let's, you know, I want, I want everybody now to take the emotion out of it, nope. yeah? Because, listen, none of us sitting here like Tottenham. Tottenham are our deadly rivals. They've always been in our shadow. However, they ain't in our shadow at the moment. Let's be real, they're not. They're in the Champions League final. We're hoping that we can get in the Europa League final, but they're in the Champions League final. That's the elite ultimate competition and they've made it to the final they've got a chance of winning it they we can't say they've been jammy doing it they've beaten Ajax who beat Ajax who beat Real Madrid Ajax who beat um you know uh, big teams to get there right they've been like you see, said Issa they've been missing some of their best players right in Harry Kane and that and they've got to the final right now they're in they're in the top four. They're going to get into the Champions League through the league as well. Have they passed us, Troops? Let's be real right now. This thing about them being in our shadow, all of a sudden they're not in our shadow, are they? They ain't passed us. What they won? Football's about winning. If they, if they win it, Football's all right, if winning. they win it then. Football's if they winning. if they win it, have they passed us right now? At this moment in time, they ain't passed if us. They, they ain't passed us. Then they won't win it, so they ain't passed us. Simple. But what if they win it? They won't win it. What if they, they won't just... win it? Mo Salah running down the wing. What if they did? They're not winning it. Read my lips. 
They are not winning it. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be real on it. What, what if they win it? He's like, have they overtaken us as a club? No, as a team, yeah. And a big, there's a big difference by that. And what I mean is, Man City haven't taken United, overtaken United as a club, because you've got decades of history to overturn and a legacy. Likewise, Arsenal, Tottenham were miles ahead. Yeah, of I know history. that. But at the moment, club, at the moment, as a club, as a team, yeah, they've long since overtaken us. They've long since overtaken us as a team, as you put 11 on there and they've had a few good seasons. But like Troop says, they haven't won anything. If they win this, then they're miles ahead of us as a team. But as a club, they've still got a long way to go for there to be like a significant shift mm. in, in terms of the power in North London. You talk about the power shift. Let me, just, let me just say something, right? Let me just throw this out there and let me just put this out there. I think whether they win it or not, I think this is a wake up call for Arsenal. Yeah, big time. Big time wake up call for Arsenal Football Club, right? Because it's all right us just sitting there all the time saying, oh, they're in our shadow. Oh, yes. But in my opinion, at the moment, they're ahead of us. They're ahead of us, right? They've got a better team than us. They've got to the Champions League final. They finished above us in the league. Even though they lost loads of games in the league, we still didn't go past them, right? Which is damning on us. Yeah. They've just built this new stadium which is probably the best stadium in the Premier League at the moment. It's brand new, but it's, it is. They're setting themselves up in the future to move ahead, right? And at the moment, they've got a team that's ahead of us, right? And I'm saying this to, to the owners of Arsenal Football Club, to Stan Kroenke, to all the people associated with the running of Arsenal Football Club. This summer is absolutely huge. You cannot allow, you cannot... Just keep this going now. You're seeing that, you know, we, yes, in the past, we've been able to hold on to this thing that, yeah, they're in our shadow, our rock. They're no longer, it's a bit like what's happened in Manchester, where Man City have come up now and they've surpassed Man United. Yeah, we can hold on to history and all them things there, but I'm dealing with now. They're, Man City have surpassed Man United and Tottenham at the moment have surpassed us. And in the summer, the owners of this football club need to do something about it. Wouldn't you agree with that? Nope. Because they ain't surpassed us. <laughs> they ain't passed shit, blood. They ain't even passed goal, blood. You understand? Know Take this for Monopoly, fam. You're mad. Well, Tottenham. This I know blue, you're Vicks, right? This fucking blue max pissing me off as well, blood. <laughs> so, now, this is the dark blue for the awake kit that we're wearing tonight. Like, see it there? Yeah. But listen, right? It's, listen, you, troops, you know what? If the, owner, if the owners of the saw, if the owners of the football saw, club are like you, you saw. What do you mean the owners of the football club are nothing like me? No, but if they if they've got that attitude like what you've got at the moment, then we're not going to progress because no, sometimes I, no. sometimes you got to look at situations right, and you got to be real. You got to look Robbie. at things. Hold on, wait. Let me just Robbie. say. Let me just say something. Saying I'm going to let you come back yeah. in. Sometimes look at things that be real. Yeah. Say to yourself, yo, you know what? You the only way you're going to defeat the opposition is if you look at them and you assess it properly. So if you look at the opposition that you're going into war against and you underestimate them and you underestimate how many tanks they've got and how many soldiers they've got, they will defeat you, right? You've got to go in there and you've got to do an honest assessment and you've got to say, you know what, they're strong there. And yo, you're very strong there. And you know what, wow, you know what, they're looking strong, man. So to defeat them, we need to get stronger. And that's what I'm saying with Arsenal at the moment. You saw we've got a Lego, stop all this rubbish about... Yeah, oh, Tottenham, I don't care. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, if we don't start dealing with this thing seriously, they're going to be surpassing us. They would have surpassed us and they're going to leave us behind. <laughs> what you got to say? No, be real now. Crunky, back out your checkbook, innit? That's all I'm saying on the matter, blood. I will never big up Tottenham. You see the videos I was receiving last night. It's not nice. I've been receiving blood. the same videos. Yeah, but I gotta go home to it as well, blood. Do you have to get in a bed with one? <laughs> do you? No, you don't, do you? You have to wake up in the morning, she's making you breakfast, running around the yard singing this shit. You understand? Apparently now Poch is bae. <laughs> what, what's, what's your thoughts on that, Issa? This, we were talking yeah. just off cam earlier, and I think it's now time for the fans to get serious because, in, in a sense, you saw the fa it was kind of fan power to an extent which helped drive Wenger out of the club, which was necessary, was needed. And if Stan Kroenke doesn't get his checkbook out this summer, and I mean serious, serious investment, it's time to really look at boycotting 
protesting and boycotting the sponsors of the club, putting the general atmosphere around the club that this isn't going to run anymore. Now, I know Arsenal's a super club, they've got global appeal, but they can't take that for granted either because fans who live in China, Indonesia, wherever they are, they're not going to buy into a brand or a product that isn't successful either. So Arsenal need to really think, and Sam Kroenke needs to really think on a business level about his asset. And if the fans aren't happy, you saw, you were, you were saying to me earlier, when Wenger was there, the empty seats, that had a bigger impact than anything else. Mm. And if they don't take this transfer window seriously, then I think the fans need to get organised. They need to really take it seriously and sacrifice a bit. Don't buy the new jersey. Don't buy match tickets. As I was saying to you earlier, so I don't even know if that does anything. Because not buying, uh, not buy, not enough. buying the brand new kit means nothing. Because you know what, the brand new kit, Adidas have already paid Arsenal for the next how many years, five years, whatever for that kit. So Arsenal already got the money. So it's about us pressuring them into making sure that that money is spent on the players and doesn't just go into the owner's pocket. And it's about us also getting the message across to the owner of the football club that right now, Arsenal fans are upset because we're... I remember, I think um, I'd done an interview last week with Lee Judges after the game. Anybody gets a chance, right? Go and watch that interview after that game, right? After the, the, the game against um, Brighton. Go and watch Lee Judges' interview, right? I thought he was brilliant. He was really passionate. And he brought up a point where he said, yo, listen, I used to watch Edu, right? He goes, Edu, who would walk into this Arsenal team, who couldn't even get into the Invincibles team. He was on the bench. And he goes, he would walk into the current team. And he spoke about how when he was at Highbury, how he used to watch world-class players every week and Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, and he named out players. And then he's then said, now we've moved to this new stadium. What for? Who are the world-class players in that team? What am I watching week in, week out? Where's the improvement? And I it cannot be allowed now to continue year in, year out, where the owner of the football club does not improve. The, the team needs investment. It's not all about money, but the team needs investment. It needs a plan. And, you know, and both of those clubs, to be fair to them, that are in the Champions League final, both Liverpool and Tottenham have had a plan. And their plan is now, you know, paying dividends. What is our plan? We just moved to a new stadium. realise the only team they beat in the knockout stages was Dortmund. They went through and away goals on both games. But it doesn't matter. They're there. They're there. Them, listen, Liverpool can bang them. Bang them. I'm going to love have, it. We, we, yeah? <laughs> I'm going to fucking love it. Yeah, they're memeing me right now. Yeah, but I will have the last laugh. Yeah, I will have the last laugh. Believe me, blood. Yeah, and you fuckers know how loud I am. So you'll fucking hear me, blood. Yeah, in your little shitty stadium. Fuck your stadium as well, but best stadium, blood. Fuck your stadium, blood. You understand? Talk from emotion. But I'm getting real right now, and I'm saying that, you know what? I am getting real. It's time now. We're going to go check Cronky when we go LA, blood. It's time now for Man, Arsenal. It's not going to be a nice like when I saw Wenger. Oh, hi, Arsenal. Can I get a picture on that, Cronky? No, no, no. With Wenger, there was a little, you understand? There. There's nothing with Cronky, blood. I tell you what, Stan Kroenke, this is a big summer for him. Does he back the manager? Just, I know, listen, he, he's had lots of excuses and owners and stuff like that saying about players and wages and stuff like that, why they couldn't spend, but there's no excuses this summer. We're going to find out how much he really wants this club to succeed. I think there's a couple of issues here. One is that we have a squad full of uh, the legacy of Arsene Wenger, which is players with... No heart. He didn't want players who had character in his dressing room because he didn't want anyone to challenge him. And for years, it was allowed to rot. And we now have players like, like you were saying, players like Mkhitaryan, uh, even a Wobi to an extent. Just players where mediocrity was allowed to last. Mustafi, for me, Shaka. So not only do we have to bring players in, we have to clear out a lot of this deadwood. How much money does does this take? How much money is Emery going to be trusted with? How much money is he going to need? And I think we need to give Emery time, but. As well, they have to be questions. Has, have we even proved defensively under Unai Emery? There are worse teams than us that can defend better than us. We have one of the worst defensive records in the league. We're a so-called top six team. So there are questions there that he's going to have to answer this summer as well. So while we have to focus on uh, the owners as well, I just have to ask the question, is Emery the man to be spending a 150, 200 million budget, uh, plus budget? So let me put it to you guys. Let me ask a question. Are Spurs no longer in Arsenal's shadow? Have they passed us? New stadium, Champions League final... Let me know what you think, but imagine if they win it. <laughs>